Hey, what's going on, Teach Better fam? It's Chris here, and I am bringing you a bonus episode from last weekend's Admin Mastermind Rewind and live Q&A bi-weekly family check-in with Ray Hewitt and Dave Schmidto. We hope you enjoy the awesome conversations and discussions that took place last weekend during this event, and we hope that you follow us in the future. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and Twitter for any of these events coming up at Teach Better Team. We hope you enjoy this episode and hope it brings a lot of positivity to start your week. Sunday to everyone. Liv and I are here. Liv, I'm so excited for you to be crashing the bi-weekly family check-in. As you guys know, as you're slowly tuning in, we're live literally every other Sunday to talk shop, take questions, and start your week off with some positivity and some love and some everything in between. Liv, it's so nice to be live with you. How are you? I'm fantastic. I've been looking forward to this ever since we planned it. I know. And it was kind of for the moment. Like Dave was like, oh, I'm not going to be there. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. And then we were talking like that next day. I'm like, live, let's go live. Yes. So excited. <laughs> we actually have a lot of people in the comments who are very excited to see you. So we can click on some of those to show them. Um, guys, you guys know that our biweekly family check-in is super casual. We're going to talk shop. We're going to say hi to all our friends. If you guys have questions that you want to pose to us, whether they be professional or even personal. I don't know how well you guys know Liv. Liv is doing so many incredible things. So maybe we'll do like a a Liv Q&A too. Uh, (laughs) But feel free to throw it in. She is also Miss Champion over there running the tech. And Liv, I could not be more proud. Look at how good these comments look popping up. Like you're a champion. (laughs) This is fun. I know. You're you're allowing me to do this. You get to like click on stuff and it's great, right? So yeah, there's so many people here. I want to say hi to. I know, is that so nice? Hey, say hi to Carrie, my partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lindsay's here. Um, So fun. So many good friends. Hey, for all of you that are in the comments, um, please think of a question that you want us to answer. It can be education related, personal related, uh, teach better team related. Consider this the the open book experience because we want to make sure that we get uh you some some fun answers as well but live if if they don't know who you are which i don't know what they're doing maybe they're brand new to teach better family maybe this is the first time they ever connected with the teach better team can you tell us what do you do who are you what do you do for the team all the stuff yes i am the digital content editor for the team also started out on the team as an ambassador uh i'm also a blogger and I'm part of the admin mastermind and I'm not on the podcast network yet, but eventually, <laughs> maybe you were, um, you were just featured in a podcast. I want to talk about, I want to, I, we'll go back to that, but I want to talk about George Kuros eventually. Oh, yes. Love George. I know. I know. Yeah. So I know you do a lot of things for the teach better team, but you also have like a, you know, like a real job too. So. Yeah. That's kind of like my day job. <laughs> I am a head teacher and a grade five teacher. So I started as a head teacher this year. So it's been really a great experience to have an admin role uh, for for the first time in my life. And I'm at a new school and I absolutely love my community, love my students. Although they're giving me a little bit of a a tough run in the last little bit. We can talk about that too a little bit. Uh, Yeah, you know, sometimes things don't go the way you want and we still power through, right? You just write with good people and even through the hard weeks, you you know, you hopefully can build up enough positivity and energy to change it up the week following. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where you lean on your PLN and all those people that are here today watching. (laughs) 
Yes, totally true. Liv, someone just tweeted at me actually earlier today. I think it was Sandra. Um, I don't know if you're watching. Um, but she tweeted at me and did an activity in our social media course that we have in the academy. Like we have a course on growing your PLN virtual, like your virtual PLN, or it's like social media to build your network, whatever the title is. I don't actually know, but there's an activity. And she was like tweeting out doing the activity. I was so proud. I was like, I love it. This is our PLN. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it when, you know, there's one thing when you are consuming and you're, you're diving into all the different possibilities that you and opportunities that you have over there. But there's another thing when you actually do it and then you tweet it out because there's, it's, it's that next step of, of connecting with other people because it's kind of like, I see it always like a stock tip. When you have some, a stock tip that you want to share with your friends, this is something you want to share. And so it's just uh, a great way to say, Hey, I've tried this something. I've tried something, and it's something that you could try. And there's something about that because I am the teacher around today because of all the learning that that I've done from everybody else. And we just build each other up with all of our knowledge and skills and ideas. And you know, there's a, a what do they say? Two two brains are greater than one, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's funny because this activity I felt like was very low stress, like. The whole point is that in this course, you're building your network. So trying to get these little steps to get you comfortable being online, get you comfortable sharing was kind of the intention behind the activity. Um, But there was like a picture that they had to evaluate what they could see and what what they perceived um, from the image. And it was so nice to have her like take on the challenge and choose to share. And I was just so proud. So, so cool. Awesome. Josh is here. I know. Hi, Josh. I know there's so many people. Josh, Brandon, Chelsea, Chrissy, Nikki. Oh my gosh. Scott so News I, here. Yeah. It's so fun. Hi, everyone. So cool. Yeah. You know, Liv, I, I'm thinking the whole concept of like challenges, we did that at the end of every chapter in our book. Yes, where I love that. Like, tweet out or d- do yeah. something yeah. like as an activity. I don't know like Every single chapter I know had one, but I'm trying to think if there was like a favorite I had. But, you know, I I think to your point, not everybody always takes advantage of those intentional moments of learning, right? Yeah. Well, and that's where after, I mean, I listen to a ton of podcasts, but I do try to, you know, tweet out once in a while something that I had taken away from it or it was a mic drop moment. And, you know, it, it serves two purposes. One is to thank the people that are amplifying their own voice or some of somebody else's. Yeah. And another is to share with other people some of the great things, because I think about when I'm on Twitter, sometimes things don't come across my feed. But if I see it, somebody else tweeting about it, then I'm like, oh, I want to check that out. Yeah. And so it just grows me and grows other people. So I, I love it when people, you know, not just consume, but just take that little step and intentionally tweet out or share out a little something more because it makes a difference. Oh, Mel's here. I told her I told Mel today <laughs> that. I'm going on live with Ray and it's the bi-weekly check-in and she's like, wait, there's a bi-weekly check-in. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so happy that you're here, Mel. We're always, we're always live. I just feel like, like guys, you have to go subscribe to the events calendar to figure out all the times that we're live. Cause literally this coming week live, eventually we have to talk about teacher appreciation. I feel like we should write all these things down, but literally next week guys, we're live every single day, at least once. And there are multiple days we're live two or three times. Yes. just because we have things going on. So go subscribe to the events calendar. That's teachbetter.com slash events calendar. Mm-hmm. And Jamie's here now too. I'm um, moderating a, one of her, her chats. We're going to focus on her book. On wait. June the 6th. So am I. I'm like June 25th or something. Yes, I saw that. Yes, that's so fun. I love Jamie's new book. I have that in front of me too, guys. I'm just going to pull out everybody's book and show them. because. <laughs> but Liv, can I just tell you, One of the places, I did want to read this to you, but one of the places I think it's so easy to share out information because people say like, I don't know what to share. Sometimes it's Mm -hmm. weird to like put yourself out there. One of the things that I really like is when you're reading the Teach Better blogs, the tweet is already created. All you do is like click two stinking buttons and you've like shared to your entire network that you read something. It's super cool. Exactly. And, And it's that easy. Yeah. Right. Once you read it, you just click, click, done. So easy. So I actually really like that because usually I read the blog, but there's so much in there that I'm like, okay, 
What of this do I want to share? And sometimes I pull out like really big takeaways, but sometimes it's nice to like share an idea because I want somebody to go click on the link and go read it. And mm -hmm. I, I love that the tweet automatically tags the author. So it's automatically giving them credit. Like I love that stuff. That's yeah. so good. And you know, Carrie and I, we, we intentionally choose what, you know, you know, we pull out something that would just kind of resonate with people. And it's not just randomly chosen. Like we, for me anyway, I carefully look through and like, why is that one really tweetable tweet yes. you know, or statement? And so, you know, it's meant to grab people's attention and bring them to our site, which is an amazing site. There's so much going on on, on teachbetter.com, right? Yeah, and I love just all the voices. Like the guest bloggers are amazing. Um, I'm glad Dave, Dave, we're already replacing you. Sorry, buddy. We miss you, but we don't need you. But we miss you. Yes, we do miss you. I was thinking today, like, oh, I don't get to see Dave on screen today. Yeah, he did share two pictures of two pictures today with me in a text message, which by the way, I just feel so fancy when when Dave Schmidow texts me, right? And the two pictures were of gorgeous like views, like beautiful water. He was in a, like a, like all these boats, he was on a dock. I'm like, Dave, where are you? And how quickly can I get there? Like, <laughs> So how quickly can you get there? I don't know. I mean, literally he was like, I'm in Florida. I'm like, that's not helpful. I'm a need specific. Send me your pin. <laughs> all right, Liv, I think we should do, I know we have like a list of things that we need to talk through, but I think we should do this activity. And I literally just picked a random page. I'm on 161. It doesn't, I haven't read the whole thing. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it for us. But I do, it seems like something that maybe can't be done right this moment. So we'll pose this challenge to anyone listening. And then hopefully within the next few hours, within maybe the next day, people could try the challenge. Does that sound good? Okay. This is, I don't even know what chapter I'm in. Sorry. I don't know. Um, it says it's com it's common practice to ask students to sketch out their ideal learning environment. So let's twist this for an or let's twist this for an activity for you. Build your ideal relaxation space. Start with a blank piece of paper and four walls. Sketch out what an ideal relaxation would look like. Then, just as you think you're done, think bigger. Include every dream possible in this sketch. Wishing for a waterfall? Throw it in there. Wishing for 10 fluffy puppies? Sketch them in. Dream big, audacious dreams. Share your sketch using hashtag teachers deserve it as you reflect on what you included in each element you chose. What does the space feel like? How can you take small elements uh, for, of your image and slowly start to incorporate them in your real life? Don't limit yourself. You deserve it. So Liv, can you tell me what would you put in your uh, relaxation space? Ooh. Ooh. You know, <laughs> when, when you first started talking, I was thinking about uh you know like you i like water I so just looking out at a calm you know what i'm not even picky it could be a calm lake it could be the ocean i'm it willing to really matter any many water <laughs> yes and then i dream of these big large open uh, doors that are like windows i don't know what you call them but they just slide right open and then you can just go out into this large patio like mm -hmm. space that might be like I don't know, 5,000 square feet. I love all of these things. <laughs> where where there, it's somewhere warm because we get a lot of rain here. So, you yeah. know, when it's sunny, we really appreciate it. You know, the yeah. people who are in Florida, I think you get it all the time. So, but like yeah. for us, we don't get it all the time. We're actually, you know, there, you probably don't know this, but Vancouver, which is where I live, live next to, yeah. uh, we have a nickname. We call it Raincouver because it rains so much here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I actually would take your relaxation space. So I hope you don't mind for your relaxation space. I'm going to, I'm going to be there with you, but it's big enough. There's plenty of space for us to spread out and obviously spend time together. I would really appreciate as many windows as possible. I really do love white walls, but also like some really comfy, cozy spaces. I'm all about like modern, but big windows. Like I'm a huge fan. Dave has a place for me. There Thank you. Go. Thank you. So, gonna buy for me too. That would be so sweet. Yeah, it'll be great. We're gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Jamie already says challenge accepted. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I see. Oh, sorry. I know you were showing the comments, so I didn't even get to address them. So, Jamie, I love that you're participating. Definitely, you guys can use whatever hashtags you want to share. But I love 
that's in here. Carrie says, yeah. my relaxation space would be full of books, coffees, and puppies. Now, you know, that's very predictable for Carrie. I yes. guess. Oh, yes. Yeah. Puppies. Mm -hmm. Oh, love puppies. You know what I've really liked, appreciated about your challenge mm -hmm. is that you not only asked us to dream about what we want, but to go further. And I think that's something that I really do in my classroom all the time is like, you know, we talk about our comfort circles or comfort zone. And then that's one of the first lessons I do in, in, in the beginning of the year. Right. And then I all like, I think, I feel like it's every day that I talk about pushing themselves outside of the comfort zone and whatever it is, it's like more, right? And so that's what I thought of when you challenged us in your box is it's not just don't stop there, but go deeper or go or, or say more or, and then, say more again or add more again. And I think it's that constant idea that there is more to give or more to do or more to show that mm -hmm. it just pushes us out a little further than, because it's so easy, not so easy. It's, there's, there's one thing to stay in your comfort zone, but you don't grow as much. Right? Yeah. And so I think when we're pushed to be more creative, then we are more creative. When yeah. we push to do more, we do more, right? right? So one of the activities that I do, uh, I don't know if you've read that with your students, or I do it in my some of my PD sessions, is I get everybody to put up their hands. So if you put up your hands, yeah. right, and that is, I tell them to put up their hands as high as they can. And then you say to them, okay, now put your hands up even more. You, and there's always just a little bit more. You see their, their bodies extend a little bit more. And so I said, okay, well, the first instruction was to put up your hands as high as they can. But when I asked you to do a little bit more, you were able to. So I wanted I want to show them that difference of, you know, there it is in you. You can do a little bit more. So that's kind of one thing. I love that activity. I feel like you could push even further. People could start standing up or jumping up and down. Like I love this concept. Yeah. And reaching for the sky. I will say, since you put this comment up, white wall from a girl that's a black wall. I won't lie, Andrea. So Andrea knows okay. I have a black wall in my bedroom. It's like a, an accent wall. It is my favorite space in my entire house and I'm moving soon and I am like going to have another black wall. Like I love my black wall. So Andrea, I do want white walls with like one accent black wall that shine me up. I'll take it. That'll be good. Is it a chalk wall or it's just black? It's not, I do have a chalk wall in my classroom that's yes. massive. It's so big, but no, it's honestly, it's just black. And I painted it um, during 2020, like while, you know, the whole world, we all had home projects and mm -hmm. it quickly became like my favorite space of all time. Like, I love it. I'm, I don't know why I love it so much, but yeah. Well, there's something about just that contrast, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And, you know, Olivia, it's funny because I was just looking at that 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 uh, experiment that we pose to people is in the teachers deserve time, space and technology chapter. Mm -hmm. And I think in here and I'm not gonna be able to find the page right now, but I think in here I talk about an activity I do with students where they design their ideal classroom and mm -hmm. do the same activity again, design what a classroom, what you would love for your classroom to look like. And they some of them, they go to like you know, some creativity elements, but then you push it further and further. And finally you get a classroom that is full of life and unicorns and disco balls and everything else. And then it facilitates a great discussion to say, Hey, why can't we have these things? Choose one thing in your design and let's actually put it in our classroom to remind you mm -hmm. of, you know, the space that, you know, we have. So I love it. So. Yeah. Well, you know, when I first started teaching, there was so much of it was what I envisioned. And it's not until, you know, in the last few years that it's about our space. It's not my space, it's our yeah. space. And the more that we can hear from them, what would make their space, our shared space, something that they would feel comfortable in and something they can add to. And even the idea of me not putting everything up on the bulletin boards, like let them do it and, yeah. you know, and, and getting their input, it's made such a big difference for, I think, for them to feel like this is their space as well. I love that, so cool. Yeah. So, so cool. Well, so I know that we got a total tangent, but I love, I love that people choose to share. And I think if you're listening mm -hmm. right now, I really believe that choosing to share is not only like going to make you a better educator, but it's going to allow everyone around you to be a little bit better today than they were yesterday and a little mm -hmm. bit better tomorrow than they were today. And yeah. that's what this is all about, right? So share what you're reading, share what you're doing, constantly challenge yourself to kind of expand on the work you're doing, even just a little bit. I really yeah. like that. And you know, if we can go 
back, you were talking about me being on a podcast with George Girls. That's exactly where I was going to go. Yep. That, that is how it all happened. Is really? Yeah. So he, I looked it up to see when he came to our, our, our district. It was in 2016. He came for, I thought it was our district PD, but it wasn't. It was um, for computer using educators in BC. And exactly. so he was a keynote speaker. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard him keynote. Uh, oh, I speak. have. He's Oh, I love the way he tells stories, right? And so one of the biggest takeaways was that we need to start blogging professionally, right? Because there's lots of reflection. And and so at the time I was in my, my staff development role in learning technologies and life was busy. I was heavily coaching. Um, and anyway, I, I didn't feel like I had the time to do that. I'm, you can call it excuse or what have It just wasn't right sure. at that moment. So it wasn't until last year that I purchased my own donate, do, domain name and I started blogging. And so I thought, you know, because it, it was always sitting in my mind, I really wanted to reach out to George to say, kind of like, you don't know me, but yeah. <laughs> you came to speak to us. And that message was loud and clear in my mind. It always sat on my heart. And so I started blogging because of you. And I said, um, you know, here it is. And he read it and he said that I had a gift of words. I'm like, George Curl said I have a gift of words. I, yes. And so he started reading my my work and, um, you know, he has a, a weekly newsletter that comes out through my email. And then, you know, was, somebody had said something. So then I opened up my email and he was like, he said something about my, my one of my blog posts. And I'm like, George Curls? mentioned me in his newsletter blew my mind and then you know next and then i knew he was uh he he's a su subscriber to my my website and then so i i knew he was i don't know if he's reading but i mean i guess he was reading it yes yeah, yeah and then next thing i knew you know every time every now and again i just remind him how much uh how much of an influence he's been on my life and he's so genuine right so authentic and so um i just anyhow so he reached out one day and said hey can you give me a call so i gave him a call and he's like first off i would like to for, love for you to be a guest on my podcast and my jaw dropped already to the floor and then next thing he said is i would love for you to write a chapter in the next book that i'm writing and like if there was like a lower floor like that's where my jaw was yes. i could not believe it and it's I, it still feels surreal um and when i looked at the list of other authors that he that will be contributing to this book it's i don't even understand how my name is on that same list oh because you know, you're amazing book. that's why because you're amazing and i'm so glad that he was able to amplify that yeah i just feel so blessed oh, such that. a good you know he's a great educator uh, you guys you know if you're listening you don't know who george kuros is absolutely go check him out he has a ton of resources obviously the podcast Libby mentioned as well and uh just somebody doing really good work for the right reasons that always seems to have suggestions. So love, love, love him so much. I actually don't know him personally. So at some point I need to like have some sort of interaction with him, but I, I am a fan and an avid reader of his work, even though I know I, you know, I joke with a lot of you guys, I don't read his work. Actually, I've, I've definitely checked out, done, done a few book studies with his stuff. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Well, I think that's a great project, Liv. You're always doing really cool projects. Well, when I'm attached to the Teach Better team, it's I all you. cool projects. <laughs> so funny. I can't believe that you just got into blogging and now you like run our blog department with Carrie. That's nuts. I know. It's so How funny. did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. You guys, yeah. It's so funny. I was actually thinking about it. For whatever reason, Liv, you coming into my life is something that very much I acknowledge as a moment that I will remember because when we started connecting and you started sharing that you had found the daily drop-ins and then obviously we became friends and you joined the team and you were a master and everything else, for whatever reason, like March, April, May, I'm always like, ah, oh, a year ago, this is when I met Liv. Like, I don't know why, but I was thinking about that a lot this week of like, I don't know specifically when the moment was, but I just vividly remember thinking, huh, we started daily drop-ins, you know, March of last year when COVID hit. And somehow we were lucky enough to meet you throughout the process. I just think that's so, 
I don't know. It's so fun. I'm so glad that you've been able to connect with so many people because you do you. incredible work. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's all Jeff. Jeff Gargitz? I don't think so. <laughs> he was the one who found me. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Jeff is so cool. Yeah. He, yeah. he does like to stalk and hunt down people. So that is, I guess, fair. That's yeah. fair. Well, it was one of those things when he reached out. I'm like, who, me? Like, who? <laughs> So and I even had to ask him, like, of all the people you could have reached out to, like, why did you, why did you ask me? And anyways, he had really kind words to say. So That's so sweet. That's so fun. All right. What else is on our list to talk about? Sorry, we've been on so many tangents for 25 minutes, but guys, it's good tangents. That's what Sunday is all about, right? Feel free to yeah. throw questions in the chat if you want tips, tricks, brainstorming buddies. That's why we're here. It can be about your professional life, like goals you have at the classroom. It can be about the Teach Better team. It can be about us as individuals, but we're here to help. So whatever you guys need. Anything on your mind, Liv? I think you were going to... Well, I, I recently read a blog post by Suzanne Daly. It's oh. from, I think a couple of days ago. Wait, and it's in called... Her, in her series? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I love her series. Yes. Uh, it's called The Fourth Quarter's Hours. And I think it's it really resonated with me because it's something that I talk about in my class a, a lot. But it's about... Uh, you know, finishing off the year strong, right? Sure. And it's sometimes, you know, there's sometimes, of course, we're tired, right? But there is still so much time remaining. And so she equated it to the idea that, um, you know, when, when you play football, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have four quarters, right? And so the idea that the fourth quarter is some doesn't matter if you're losing or you're winning, but you want to finish off strong. So it's that same idea that right. whatever it is that you're all in until the final buzzer, mm -hmm. right? That every, to me, I feel like every interaction will still count until the, that final buzzer and, and, and then some, right? Because what to me, I always say to my kids, once you're, once you're mine, you will always be mine. Like any, you, I'll never be stop being your teacher. So I mean, I still have I still have a student that I taught in my first year of teaching. She's 29 years old and we still connect and, you know, uh, but I think it's that idea that and I do that in my classroom, too, in that, you know, if they've been working for a while, because we teach around the same rate, right? Like I have, I have grade fives. Yeah. And so yeah. There are times where they're they're working hard and I'll say to them, OK, it's just like a marathon, right? I know you're working hard. Um, if you feel like you need that natural break, because I do that same thing, if they need a break, they, they can take a break. But if you feel like you need a break, that's the moment that I want you to push yourself even more. Put in two more minutes and stretch yourself, because then it's the more you do that, the more you build your stamina, just like running, right? You don't stop every time you feel tired. No, you run a little bit more so that you just get stretch yourself a little bit more each time, kind of like the, you know, a little bit better each time. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you grow that that uh, focus, that time, that energy, and you can um, you can just do a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of idea. Just push yourself a little bit more than you would normally do. That's a good challenge for people too. I mean, I feel like we all kind of need it right now. I actually just tweeted that blog out earlier today. So <laughs> I know exactly what blog you're talking about because I was just looking at it. And um, I I really loved that it was a great reminder. I have I was just talking to uh, Joshua Stamper actually on a on a Zoom call earlier today. He has 15 school days left, which then allowed me to to acknowledge that I have I think 20 school days left because I'm like a week longer than him. Right. And it and in some regard, I'm like, oh, 20 days that seems so quick. And then at the other time, I'm like, oh wait, 20 days that that seems very long. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I have so many things I want to accomplish. I'm going to try and do my best to incorporate all of them within the next 20 days, you know, and it's mm -hmm. exciting to, to think about the possibilities when your time really is limited and how we can celebrate that. And I think it's, it's such a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think because you only have so much time, especially me this year, because I'm part head teacher that I really only have equipped, like I just calculated out the minutes and I really only have three days a week with them. And so every minute that I am with them, I want to make it intentional right yeah. to the very end. And everything that we do, there's a reason for it. And everything that I say, there's a reason for it. And then it's all about moving this, this, um, I don't know, like a ship, right. That you just want to move along and, and get better and improve. And 
Um, actually, one of the chapters that I, I contributed to um, Rochelle Denae Poth's book is all about being so intentional with every really every minute and every interaction that you have with students. That's There's great. a question. That yeah. I saw this from Brandon Oates. Brandon, yeah. I'm excited for you. Congratulations on turning in your master's thesis soon. Um, is due on Friday, man. You got only a few more days. I vividly remember turning in my thesis, like like it was yesterday. Vividly remember. It's a moment, Brandon. Yeah. Like soak that in. That is a mm -hmm. moment. Huge accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying, I'm open to any tips for making through this week. Yeah. So Liv, this kind of goes along the lines of what we were talking about for you as well. Like, how do you, regardless of all the things, how do you ensure that you're setting yourself up to have a good week and, you know, to do the very best you can? You know, Brandon is struggling. He's saying, oh, I'm so stressed. It's consuming my life, but I just have to get, I just have to get to Friday. Right. And mm -hmm. I know for you, you had some things going on in her classroom and you're like, okay, but you want to make sure this coming week is better than it was last week, right? Having that mentality. Um, for, for me, my student teacher ends this coming week. Uh, it's, it's very bittersweet. Uh, we're also concluding a, a challenging unit. And I just want my students to persevere through this challenging concept. So what, what are your strategies for how you, how you do that? Well, I actually just writ, wrote my second blog post for my series. And it's called Each Day is a Gift. Mm. And when I wake up, I see each day as a gift. And I, I feel like when you look at a day like that as a gift, then you treasure it, right? Mm. That it's something that you're grateful for and that you make the most of it. And I know we have so many times that we have those messages like carpe diem, you know, make the most of it. And it's hard to remember that every single day. Yeah. But it's it's a practice that I'm trying to do every morning, right? That they are... Um, that it's, it starts with here, right? That if I start my day going, yay, I have another day to live yeah. and I feel excited about it, it makes all the difference. And I teach my students too that, you know, we do a community circle every morning. And if I come to school and I say, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm, you know, so-so, I'm gonna live my day that way versus right. I'm excited to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to spending the day with you. It changes everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really cool because since the beginning of the year until now, when we do whip around and share how we're feeling, I have so many kids who are like, I'm feeling amazing today. I'm feeling awesome today. I'm feeling fantastic today. And it just starts with that mindset. And I think that's, you know, I don't know if it's like fooling your brain, but I think it's just the way you see things, right? That if I'm coming to school and I'm, I'm feeling that way, Every person that I see, I'm like, I'm really happy to see you, right? I'm really glad that I, I get to enjoy the day with you. Well, and it's interesting. And I, we'll get to the comments in a second. But Liv, I think the same thing when we are talking about this concept and, and you hit a nail on the head that, that the mindset is the first step to whatever else our strategies are. And I've, 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 you know, I could share a number of things that I do. And I'm sure, Liv, you can come up with even more things you do intentionally to remind yourself. But choosing the mindset is first. And then Liv, I, I really love that you're then choosing the mindset and sharing your appreciation and gratitude for others because it feels good to make other people feel good. So when you can choose to say, I'm gonna live today, I'm gonna be in a good mood, I'm gonna have a wonderful day, don't just keep that to yourself. But then as you're walking through the halls, share your appreciation and your gratitude for those you see because you'll be brightening their day as well and how wonderful will that make you feel as you know in addition so i like yes that. and that's something that i i live every single day and i say it all the time in that you know in every interaction it's an opportunity it's an opportunity to uplift others through your kindness or your gratitude and to help make their day a brighter one and yeah. you know, it's all in us to give yeah, yeah. i uh I feel like I, I don't know if you guys or Liv, I have no idea if you listen to the Influential She podcast that I recorded recently. I love Influential She, by the way, if you guys are not following that duo, they are maybe like they're a new follow for me, but I love these women. Like it's a, I, I like really want to be friends with them. Like they, I have talked to them two or three times. I have one of their phone numbers and like Ooh. I text them sometimes just because I really want them to like accept me as like their, their newfound friend, but two incredible women, influential. She, they have a podcast and a website, go check them out. But, um, 
I did a podcast with them recently where I kind of shared that I was going through some hard times in 2019 and 2020. And I think the biggest thing for me, Liv, is like I had the mindset, but those reminders were what I needed. You know, you're talking about those those phrases you hear all the time. For me, the phrases, you know, are important, but you also need to leave yourself reminders and breadcrumbs to have that mindset. So whether it's putting a post-it on your dashboard that says something to keep you going or a word that's going to spark some love and appreciation in your mind or you know, I don't know if you use Pinterest ever, but I have like a Pinterest board that I made this year. And it is all the things that kind of represent the life I hope I have in five years. And it, there are a variety of things. Some of it's environmental. Some of it is is family related. Some of it is dog related. There's water pictures, right? They're all things that I'm like, in five years, this is why I'm working so hard. This is what I want to see for myself. And those little reminders, you know, that way through the hard weeks, you're like, yes, but I'm doing this with intention because I know I'm going somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the other th- piece is being able to turn what some people would see as a negative thing mm-hmm. and seeing it like an opportunity. Yeah. Right. And so I get to show you a story. There's in my principal's office, there is some, I don't know what it is, some device that beeps every day. It's hidden, it's like behind the shelving, so you can't even access it, but it comes on every single day. And so we talked about how, you know, when when she hears, instead of thinking like, this is annoying, I'm trying to do my work and just beep, 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 beep. So what she does is when she hears it, she's like, grateful, 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 grateful. (laughs) So it's just a reminder to be grateful for whatever it is that she's dealing with. What a right. great idea. It's like, you know, a sign from above being like, could you take a moment, be very grateful? Yeah. And you're like, yes, actually, I would love to take a moment and do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know there's been so many questions, Liv. Where do you want to start with these questions? I know sometimes yeah. it's really great to pay attention to them, but also it's good to take a pause and have discussion. So what are you thinking? Yeah. So this is from Mel. Why do people decide to do a master's? Because they are super passionate about a particular area. And then she's asked, I guess she's asking. Yeah, let's do one question at a time. Yeah. Sorry, go back to the first right one. I didn't read that until after. Okay, um, so, and yeah, that's the tricky part of our comments is like you have to read them before you put them up. But sometimes it's so tricky to like, oh my gosh, this is why you're running the tech today. It's so fun. Um, Liv, do you have your master? Did you get your, yeah? And yeah. what was your um, decision in terms of making that choice to go get your master's? Well, it was, we often have um, things that come across our emails that say, here's another uh, master's program that's being offered at the local university. Um, Here, when we have, when we take on a student teacher, we actually get credits. Mm -hmm. And so I I have enough, like, you know, you have some credits that pay for some of your courses. And so things come across and, you know, some are are more enticing and appealing than others. And so the one that I did was kind of a, it was, an interesting one because it was a two in one. So one was it was a curriculum and uh, design, and then the other is like reading instruction. Okay. So it was yeah we took courses that were both. So it's kind of like a dual masters if you want to call it that. Sure. And the other the other enticing thing was it was offered off campus like off site. So they hmm. six of the ten courses were offered in my own district at a school. Like how much easier can that be, right? Right. So uh, I, I did it with my cousin, and so it was a great experience to do with her at the same time. And we're pretty early in our our career as well, so the timing of it was was good. I love to I love going to school. I love learning things. So it was just the right timing. Yeah, it's interesting. I I felt the same way. I waited about three years, and then I started my master's and. It had a lot to do with a bunch of different factors, which is kind of what it sounded like for you, right? It just kind of everything aligned. It just made sense. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, I also work in a building that gives you credit when you take student teachers. And I have a tuition waiver because I'm so close to university. We we work very closely with the university in town. Mm -hmm. So um, my master's was paid for, which was just a wonderful opportunity. And uh, I, you know, I not only got my master's in, you know, curriculum instruction because I liked the topic. But also to be completely transparent, Mel, my district gives you a raise if you get your master's. So, Same. so I was kind of like, well, it's free. I'm young. Um, I I should be learning. Like I'm only three years in the field. I have so much to learn. And so, you know, and I also get a pay increase. So, 
check. Yeah. You're doing the same job. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah. So it's really fun. Yeah. I really loved, um, uh, college was not necessarily something I thought I was going to, to do, uh, when I was younger. And so, to be able to have my undergraduate, my master's, and I actually was on faculty at ISU for a while as well, teaching a course. And I I think that that also was a little bit of like a bucket list, you know, kind of, hey, I'm, I'm smart enough, I'm successful enough to get a master's degree. Like, I think there was a little bit of that drive too. I don't know if that makes right. sense. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. What uh, her next question is, what units are you doing right now, Ray? Uh, from math, I assume is what she's asking. I don't know if you want to show that, Liv. Um, my students right now in math six, I teach two courses, um, two sections. No, I teach a bunch of sections, but I teach two courses. Um, one of them is in a YouTube unit where they are actually uh, learning how order of operations is actually utilized in the real world on things like YouTube. So that's their internship they're finishing up right now. My other group, oh, they're in a construction unit. They're doing um, measurement and proportional uh, relationships. And then they both end that unit, not this week. No, it is this week or next week, regardless. They're ending this unit strong. And then we're going into our Lego unit, which is where students are using geometry and they are actually building as a class they're building a life-size lego suit that um it'll be really fun i saw i think it was you had posted a picture somewhere on and Instagram. I thought, wow that's so cool it's the best it's so fun and it's a great end of the year thing um i really love the themed internships i'm able to create but i also really love opportunities where students can blend in their learning between mathematics and obviously like massive creativity. And it's just the environment during this unit is always so fun. So, yeah. So good. So good. Um, any other comments we want to go to before we change our plan of what we were talking about right now? Anything? I'm looking, I'm looking. Good. All right. Do you see any comments we need to grab? I think we're good. Yeah. She's just getting some kudos to you <laughs> love the creative ideas so fun yeah this is it's always fun to do like exciting things in the classroom because then we enjoy them more right that's yeah so oh totally, totally. yeah absolutely. and what i think you know is i'm going to do something different tomorrow because we finished our body systems unit for science mm -hmm. and so there's two more different ways that we can go with with um our science unit and i thought you know what why am i going to decide what we need, what we learn next. I'm going to ask them. There's, I'm going to see. You. I'm going to ask them. You know what, what, what most interests is what in, most interests you. Uh, we have two months left, and so I thought yeah, there is a way that you can do both too at the same time, and just really allow them voice and choice, right? And yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I have this big plan, so we'll see how it goes. I've never done that before because it's always teacher saying, okay, this is what the unit we're learning about next, but. Yeah. You'll have to keep us updated, Liv. I'd love to hear how that goes. I have done a few units and I've supported teachers doing units where they had three or four choices and the students got to choose their next unit of study. And, you know, she, I've, I've seen just some really big creativity elements there. So I love that. So good. So good. So, so good. So, Danielle, yeah. thanks for the idea of allowing yeah. students to choose how the end of the year goes. There you go. Love it. So fun. And I see Chelsea's talking about maybe she might go get her master's. Um, yeah. Chelsea, you know, I, I feel like everything in life continues to move and progress. And you just want to find the right fit for yourself. You know, 10, 20 years ago, the getting your master's was the way you were going to further your learning. Chelsea, you right now learn every day because I see you constantly sharing blogs you're reading. I see you on live videos. I see you doing professional development constantly. You're reading books. So it's like masters might be a good fit but you do a ton so i i do love that you are constantly a learner i think that's so awesome mm -hmm. and she had a comment for you ray i'm so glad you got to do your lego geometry unit this year i love seeing your students projects on social media uh, they're so fun i can't wait to post pictures i need to collect some cardboard i need that's like next on my list is trying to mm -hmm. figure out the cardboard situation but right i'm not there yet i'm just gonna enjoy and we're gonna figure it out it'll be fine <laughs> I, I always go to like anybody who does the the paper refilling for the photocopier. There's lots of you know boxes that you can get. Yeah, from. or live because I usually need like lots of cardboard because we're making like these like eight massive suits. Um, any department store 
mm. is getting shipments and you just go and you ask the manager and they take you back to their recycling dumpster. And you can load it all into your car. It's so nice. So great. Uh, shout out to TJ Maxx is who helped me two Ooh. years ago. They were so sweet. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And just getting the kids to bring it in too. Exactly. Because you really do need a variety. If you're going to make an entire Lego suit, you not only need the big boxes and the small boxes, but also some flexible elements of cardboard in terms of like using like a, what, what are the boxes like that Pepsi comes in? Like, like soda cans come in, like those are, it's all good. To, they bend a little bit easier. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So yeah. I love it. Cool. You know, Liv, we've been live for 25 minutes. So before we, or I'm sorry, for 45 minutes, I can't read the clock been live for 45 minutes. Before we end today, I thought it would be nice to kind of highlight this week because it's the start yes. of Teacher Appreciation Week. I think most educators I've talked to have discussed how stressed and overwhelmed they are. And I hope that today we were able to give them some ideas, but I'm hoping throughout the week we can really celebrate them is kind of what I'm hoping for. So do you want to highlight some of these pieces with me? Yes, I would love to. Where do you want to start? I think we should probably start with the live series. The yes. live series is what's going on. <laughs> Every single day this week, guys, six o'clock Eastern, we are live. Like six o'clock Eastern every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's seven whole days. And Liv, you and I are closing it out next Sunday together. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be funny. We'll like bookend the, the two series. I like this. Mm -hmm. I'm so looking forward to that. And we have so many, can we say who? Yeah, it, that's been out and about. There's so many people joining us um, mm -hmm. and they all have actually, specific topics that yes, they'll be sharing on whatever you guys want. You can ask questions live, but their their topics are also relevant to their passion areas. So Mandy Freilich is one yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. Maurice Martin is another. Do you have anybody on your mind that you want to really highlight, Liv? Well, you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Liv and I are excited to be on. I know Caitlin and Megan are going to be on. Yeah. Yes, I was going to mention Caitlin. She's starting us off, isn't she? Tomorrow. She is tomorrow. I know. Yeah. Crazy. I, I can't believe it's already here. We've been planning this for months, guys. Mm -hmm. Months. Yeah. And the cool thing is that's not it. No. There's so much more that the team has planned. I know. And so so make sure, mark your calendars. Right now, all of you take out your phone, set an alarm, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Central. Join us live. We'll be on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Incredible people joining us with still some surprise we didn't even name. And uh, talking about just their appreciation for teachers, but also the support that they're really eager to provide for educators. So um, there's some there's some good people joining. Uh, mm -hmm. in addition the to nice that, thing is too, if you miss it, because it's three o'clock for me and that's right when I get out, right? Yeah. But when you if you miss it, you can just watch the replay. Yes. It's that, that simple, right? I think we should probably take the series and throw it in the academy too. I don't know. I feel like I've very often recently been doing series and when the mm -hmm. series is done, we've put it in the academy as a free course just to kind of mm -hmm. house like to give it a, a safe space to easily locate, you know, the the videos. Because after a while, you just lose them. They're so hard to find. Yeah, so. and, I don't, and I was going to say, I, I love that idea because it is it will be that much easier to find. It's just yeah. one stop. And, and the thing is, once you're in the academy, you can see what else is there. Right? You, right. you may not have known, like you may be new to, new to our family and go, oh, there was another series on something else. And so yes. like the focus on the focus, right? Like love if you joined us late. You can easily go back and, and watch all the the previous shows. Yeah. And anything, guys, that we stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch is free for you now. And it's also a free course in the Academy. There's a ton of free courses, but like our 12-hour lives are there. Like they're just the constant, you know, content that we want to make sure is there to support you. But anywho, that will be a good thing. We have a swag and Academy code going out all over recently. Um, the code is just, we love you with a capital letter of each word. We is the W love L U is the Y. Um, and that gets you 25% off all courses and swag. So go shopping cause we appreciate you. We love you. And there's um, some new things, aren't there? You know, there but, are, like, if you haven't hopped into the, the swag store in a while, there's some new things there. New things. It's yeah. true. I love our swag. So I was just meeting yeah. with Josh today about some new swag that will be coming to the store. So Ooh. cannot wait for that. I think that code works all month, by the way, guys. If you want to wait yeah. a week, enjoy, you know, maybe you want to shop next weekend. I think the code's available all month long. So no stress. Yeah. You can just use it there. Yeah. And well, I'd like to encourage our listeners to take pictures of them wearing their swag. Got me you know, 
this morning I saw Nikki. She had, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but she, she had two different sweatshirts that she had on. Yeah. And, oh, there she is. Hi, Nikki. And it, you know, I didn't, like I saw the, the one with the heart, but to see it on her, it's like, oh, that looks so awesome. Yeah. So, I, love, it off. I love the green heart sweatshirt. That was, you know, that, you know, Megan, obviously we're going to just sh shout you out every time Megan Wells came up with the green heart during 12 hour live. It just made sense for us to have green heart swag. That's all I'm saying. Love it. Um, other things live that we have, we have a giveaway going on um tuesday through thursday that has some really really fun stuff in it that's our giveaway for the month so go check that out yeah nikki we love you swag problem sorry not sorry <laughs> um we also have for the next two weeks it closes on the 15th so you have this week and next week we're doing a free pd giveaway we're going to give away 10 sessions to 10 schools to bring the teach better team to your building and do professional development. So regardless of where you're located around the world, we can do it virtually, we can do it in person, but you can work with a member of the Teach Better team for a completely free session. There's no, there's no like gimmick, like literally we're just gonna come do an hour of free professional development wherever you tell us to show up. And we're giving 10 away, so definitely go apply for that. That's over at teachbetter.com slash free PD 2021, I think. So I, I also just shared it on my Facebook, so. Go friend request me and you can see that the, I don't just shared it. So. so amazing things. So fun. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. Yeah. There's also, also stuff we're not allowed to tell you that we're doing this week. So <laughs> those are all the surprises we could spoil right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very exciting. Liv, thanks for coming live with me. It was so fun to like talk shop and hang out with you and just see your smiling face and share tips and tricks. I always enjoy our chats and I'm excited that we get to chat again next week at six o'clock Eastern. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited too. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so fun. To you. So fun. Guys, don't forget. Also, we have all the normal stuff going on this week. Brain break. We'll have um, our transition or like our chats going on. It used to be mastery chat. Now we're transitioning it to teach better hashtag teach better chat. So that will be going on Thursday. We have incredible guests every single time. So, so all right, Liv, I think we're, I'm going to click the video thingy, my Bob. Okay. And then we're going to peace out. So for everybody here, we love you. We hope you have an incredible teacher appreciation week. And as you are taking in all the love that people are sharing, don't forget to also share it with others. Yeah. Keep your mindset up. Eat a little bit of extra candy this week just to give you some sugar. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. If you need us, please feel free to reach out. We're always here. Good to see you guys. See ya. Bye.